who are the Rohingya? The Rohingya are often described as the world's most persecuted minority. They are an ethnic group, majority of whom are Muslim, who have lived for centuries in the majority Buddhist Myanmar. They are not considered one of the country's 135 official ethnic groups and have been denied citizenship in Myanmar since 1982, which has effectively rendered them stateless. What's happening? Due to ongoing violence and persecution, hundreds of thousands of Rohingya have fled to neighboring countries, either by land or boat, over the course of many decades. Residents and activists have described scenes of troops firing indiscriminately at unarmed Rohingya men, women, and children. The UN, as well as many rights groups such as Amnesty International and Human Rights Watch, have consistently decried the treatment of the Rohingya by Myanmar and neighboring countries. The UN has said that it is very likely that the military committed grave human rights abuses in Rakhine that may amount to war crimes, allegations the government denies. 809,000 Rohingya have fled violence and persecution in Myanmar to seek refuge in Bangladesh, including 603,000 who have arrived since August 25th. They report horrific stories of mass killings, arson, rape, and abuse. 9,000 Rohingya have died, most of them from violence in Rahine State, Myanmar, between August 25th and September 24th, according to surveys conducted in refugee camps in Bangladesh. 288 villages that Human Rights Watch estimates have been destroyed since August 25th, according to satellite data. Because Myanmar has refused access to human rights investigators, the current situation cannot uh, be, cannot yet, sorry, cannot yet be fully uh, assessed, but the situation remains or seems a textbook, uh, textbook example of ethnic cleansing. 10,333 refugees, on average, have crossed into Bangladesh daily since August 25th. Most are taking refuge in makeshift camps that have been set up in Cox Bazar district on land made available by the government of Bangladesh. How is Imana Medical Relief helping? IMR is helping by sending weekly teams of medical volunteers to Bangladesh under the umbrella of FEMA, Federation of Islamic Medical Associations, in coordination with local partners. Our volunteer doctors travel to Bangladesh to provide critically needed healthcare to the Rohingya refugees via mobile clinic outreach to the makeshift refugee camps. So far, IMR volunteers have treated an average of 2,000 patients per weekly mission. I wanted to speak a bit about our uh, Save Rohingya medical mission uh, for, our, uh, for the Rohingya refugees in Bangladesh along the border of Myanmar and uh, Bangladesh. Um, Imana, as you know, has been committed to medical relief uh, uh, for quite some time. As you know, we've uh, uh, had 80 emergency medical missions around the world. We've uh, treated over 2.5 million patients around the world, eight hospitals we've built, um, 37 and 40 some emergency response teams. And uh, first and foremost, I want to thank all of you who have supported our work around the world uh, with 200 some projects taking place. Uh, but now's the time to really come together again for Save Rohingya. Uh, I have to admit, it's something that, uh, you know, I thought I understood. I thought I knew what was going on. Uh, but until we actually stepped foot on the ground and experienced um, our time in the camps, in Balokali and Talokali, uh, in, the, uh, in those areas, um, did it not hit me the, uh, the extent of dismay, the extent of uh, tragedy, the extent of suffering, the extent of wanting hope uh, until I actually visited there. I've been blessed to have been with Imana and been to a lot of places around the world. And, you know, some places that you, you just put that, that intense poverty, that intense uh, struggle, you know, that we, we see on TV and on the news, um, I thought I'd seen it all. Uh, but when I entered the Rohingya camps, uh, I had to take a breath. Uh, a step back. Uh, my teammates that were with me, um, they also were in awe and all of them have been to these places or similar places as well. Um, it's a city. It's a million people. This camps, uh, you know, you're, I'm sure you're seeing some of the images here that we're going to we'll be sharing with you. It is for endless miles that you just see huts and tents on top of each other. 
and the, you have children playing in sewage and you have latrines and fecal material and urine just runs out that in along your home and inside you're going to be cooking and eating food. I think what is always neglected in every single one of these uh, crises that we have volunteered and have been part of, healthcare always is sort of forgotten because it's a special niche. And that's something that we've been blessed with, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us with, um, uh, with that knowledge or the ability to, to obtain that knowledge and be physicians today. And that's what is forgotten in all these crises where millions or hundreds of thousands of people are displaced is who can provide the health care. We're going to focus on health care because that is something that is so much needed. Inside deep in the camps that there's children who are dying from just asthma or children who are uh, in respiratory distress and, uh, and have diphtheria. And then there's adults who are cachectic and they have vitamin deficiencies and they have rickets. So those of you who doctors understand what I'm talking about. And they're just so weak and frail. Alhamdulillah, we've been able to go deep in these camps and we take care of the, the, the normal things that you see, the, the, the fevers, the coughs, the upper respiratory tract infections, and all those things. And then when, I, when I look at it, you know, we're treating 400 patients a day, every single day in the camps. We're preventing these people from getting sicker because once they cross that line, when you and I get sick, we take the antibiotics, we go see our doctor. If we're really sick, we get admitted. There's no returning when they cross that threshold of illness and we're able to help them. But then every single day, there was eight to 10 people who come in who had crossed that threshold. They were literally dying. They would not survive. And Alhamdulillah, we were there. We were able to, to, to help them, to treat them, and then work with our partnerships on the ground and the ambulances that the donors have donated to funds for and use those ambulances and then transfer them to the field hospital. I wanted to, sh to share some of that with, with all of you. Um, uh, today um, to motivate you to come with us, to join us, to be part of us, to volunteer with us as our medical missions are coming up, and also to continue supporting us uh, with your tax-deductible donations uh, so that we can continue to add teams and continue to add uh, additional weeks and months to the calendar. Currently, we're scheduled until the end of March. Uh, I think very soon and shortly, uh, we will be adding the month of April but it's all going to be contingent upon the amount of money that we have. To help people, uh, you need good you need good hearted people who are willing to volunteer, but you need big hearted people who are willing to donate uh, to allow for that to happen so that together we can make a difference. How can you help? Spread the word about the Rohingya refugees. Spread the word about IMR efforts to help. Volunteer or donate today and let's save lives together.